Okay, in Baghdad has just received a call from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to tell him officially that Iraq will be releasing all foreign nationals. From ABC, this is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Sitting in tonight, Diane Sawyer. Good evening. Words Americans have been hoping to hear. The hostages, Saddam Hussein's guests, may be coming home. There are more than 6,000 Western and Japanese citizens still detained or hiding in Iraq and Kuwait, 930 of them Americans. This morning, Hussein announced they will be free to leave, maybe within days. The Voice of America has already started telling them preparations are underway. The administration called it a welcome and significant development, a sign that the international pressure on Iraq is working. We begin tonight's coverage in Baghdad with ABC's Karen Burns. It came as a surprise, especially to those most affected. I like that. <laughs> it's great. No, I'm very, very happy. It's overwhelming. A taxi driver informed us. He said, oh, you're free. After four months and four days in captivity, hostages learned that President Saddam Hussein would release them all, both in Iraq and those hiding in Kuwait, unconditionally and immediately. Why are the hostages being released all of a sudden? Um, there has been uh, some changes, positive changes, in the world public opinion, including the American public opinion. Iraqi officials and Western analysts here believe President Saddam agreed to make concessions in meetings two days ago with longtime allies King Hussein of Jordan and PLO leader Yasser Arafat. Both have a vested interest in seeing peace talks go forward. They want linkage to the Palestinian issue. But one Iraqi official says the hostages are being released just because they are no longer needed. The Iraqi forces uh, took advantage of this period to complete their uh, deployment in the province of Kuwait and now they are fully prepared to deter any uh, aggression uh, on uh, Iraqi territory. American officials are still waiting to see if Saddam Hussein's promise is kept. I have put a bottle of California champagne in the icebox. Uh, I will uncork it when I see these people with their exit visas and uh, on the airplane. Tomorrow, the Iraqi National Assembly will vote on Saddam Hussein's proposal to release the hostages. If they vote as they are expected to, the hostages could be released immediately, as soon as papers are processed and human shields are brought in from strategic sites. Karen Burns, ABC News, Baghdad. ABC News has learned that in addition to telling Hussein to release the hostages, the PLO and King Hussein have also urged him to get out of Kuwait and try to make a separate deal with King Fahd of Saudi Arabia. Under the deal, Iraq would gain access to the sea and keep the oil fields along the Iraq-Kuwait border. Release of the hostages is only one of the demands made by the United Nations. Withdrawal from Kuwait is another, and the restoration of the Kuwaiti government. So the reaction from President Bush today was, keep the pressure on. ABC's Brit Hume is with the president in Santiago, Chile. Word of the Iraqi announcement had reached President Bush aboard Air Force One as he flew into Santiago. Mr. Bush could not do other than welcome the news, but there was the danger it would undermine his unyielding stand toward Iraq. He said nothing about it until asked at a joint news conference with Chilean President Elwin. The release of all hostages would be a very good thing, but the problem is the aggression against Kuwait, and the man must leave Kuwait without reservation, without condition. The president insisted there is no behind-the-scenes diplomacy between the U.S. and Iraq. There are no secret negotiations, direct or indirect, with Iraq over this question. None, and there will be none. And he denied the U.S., which is working on a compromise U.N. resolution on a Middle East peace conference, is trying to give Saddam a face-saving concession for leaving Kuwait. I don't care about face. He doesn't need any face. He needs to get out of Kuwait without trying to complicate this matter by uh, talking about some Middle East peace settlement or peace conference. However that plays out, the release of the hostages, assuming it happens, achieves a major goal of the administration's Gulf policy. But it also removes one justification for the use of force at the very time when many in Congress and elsewhere are claiming that force is unnecessary because the policy is working without it. Rit Hume, ABC News, 
Santiago, Chile. In his announcement this morning, Hussein mentioned what he called a number of positive developments, among them the fact that Democrats in Congress have been urging patience. Yesterday, Secretary of State Baker listened to that message from Democrats in the Senate. Today, Mr. Baker heard from members of the House, and as ABC's John McQuethy reports, he got an earful. The more Saddam Hussein gives ground, the rougher it seems to get for Secretary Baker to sell administration strategy. Today, House members repeatedly asked why the administration was in such a hurry to threaten a war. Why not wait and give sanctions time to work? When you say, uh, wait, 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 that undercuts a strategy that is showing every possibility of working, Mr. Hamilton. Baker was asked if fighting to save Kuwait would be worth the deaths of 15,000 or more American soldiers. But it seems to me essential that we have to ask ourselves as a country whether or not the object is worth the loss of life. Is there a more fundamental, central it question, is a question in Mr. this Cosmire, debate that as should to be how asked. many Americans, Mr. Secretary, me, will die in the Persian Gulf? Let me tell Gulf you when the question ought to be asked. The question ought to be asked if, as, and when there is a decision made to use force. That's when it ought to be asked. Baker was also asked about rumors that the U.S. was now, for the first time, willing to support a U.N. resolution calling for an international conference on the Arab-Israeli question, something Saddam Hussein, among others, has wanted. We are not now recommending that an international conference on the Arab-Israeli conflict be held, nor are we supporting a resolution in the Security Council that would seek to convene such a conference. But the U.S. does not have to support such a resolution. It could abstain, allowing the measure to pass. That would keep America's Arab coalition partners happy and signal to Iraq that the U.S. is, in fact, willing to negotiate. John McQuethy, ABC News, the State Department. Just the mention of that issue sends shudders through Israel. The Prime Minister, Yitzhak Shamir, who will meet with President Bush at the White House next week, made it clear that Israeli opposition to any such conference has not changed. Here's ABC's Dean Reynolds. On a London stopover before flying to the United States, Israeli Prime Minister Shamir firmly rejected the talk of an international peace conference on the Middle East. Such a decision will be taken by any body, any foreign body. We will not participate in it. But with the, the we will UN... not accept it. Addressing the Palestinian situation in an international conference would, in Shamir's opinion, mean international isolation for Israel and worldwide pressure to give up the occupied territories he has vowed to keep forever. Tonight, Israeli television showed Secretary of State Baker denying any change in the U.S. policy about a Mideast conference, but privately, Israeli officials remain suspicious that some change may be in the wind. Relations between Jerusalem and Washington have seldom been worse than they are now, and the mere mention of an international Mideast peace conference will do little to improve the atmosphere for Mr. Shamir's meeting at the White House next week. Dean Reynolds, ABC News, Tel Aviv. In a moment, practicing trench warfare in the Gulf. Still more technical trouble for the space shuttle Columbia. And on the American agenda, how to break up America's love affair with gas-guzzling cars. This is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings, brought to you by Tylenol.